Yes. I'm reading a quote from a website, a coaching website from today's guest. I don't know if it's a quote or a statement. It's a question. But listen, attention, real estate agents. Are you ready to make six figures in real estate in the next six to 12 months? Say that again. Are you ready to make six figures in real estate in the next six to 12 months? And I think some of you are thinking to yourself, I'd like to do another deal, let alone make six figures in the next six to 12 months. So you've come to the right podcast today because our guest, Frank Bernardo, is going to teach you exactly that because he does this for a living uh, within two real estate offices within the I would call it Southern California. He's based out of, uh, you're, you live in Santa Clarita, based out of West LA and Bakersfield. So kind of covering a pretty broad area though. Frank, welcome to the Lab Code Agents podcast, man. I am excited to ask you these questions because this is what every agent needs right now. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're going to like it, but they need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you said, and we were just talking off camera, the old the old adage about, you know, uh, teach, teaching a person to, to, to fish, you know, and, and what, what was the, give me that quote again. Cause I know what you're talking about, but now I yeah. can't recite it. So if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach him how to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime. Yep. Yep. And that's exactly what you're doing. And as you mentioned, uh, you know, it's, it's teaching someone to fish, you know, that they, they want to stick their net in the water and they want the fish to swim into it. Yeah. And and that is the reality of what, un unfortunately, I'm not going to just pick on real estate and say that's just humanity, right? We're all looking for an easy street and easy street doesn't exist. And so I think that's what we're going to talk about today. So, But I want to start here because I don't want to assume uh, anybody knows who you are. So we'll just assume nobody knows who you are. And, and let's hear your story. What brought you into the business and led you to where you are today? So tell us. Wow. So it, it's actually, it's a... Uh... It's not your typical story. Um, I actually was born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. I grew up there. Um, I joined the military when I was out there. I was an army combat military police officer for a number of years. So we have a mutual friend that was in the military as well. And that's how him and I, you know, we connected at that level as well. Uh, but then I became a police officer in Las Vegas. And I did that until about 1999. And in 1999, I got married. And my wife um, was originally from California. And she wanted to move back to California. And she was just like, you know, we'll move back there. We'll have a family. We'll have kids. My family will help. Family, family doesn't help. Um, and then so they won't be story, listening to this, I hope. Probably, yeah, probably not. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I, you know what? I, I was like, I'll test for LAPD. So I tested for LAPD and I walked through the testing. It was really easy compared to Vegas for some reason. It was a little weird, but I was getting to where I was waiting for my acceptance letter to the academy. And I went to my wife and I was like, so I have what I would call a superhero complex. Like I want to help everybody. Um, that's not the job of a cop. And unless you're a cop, you don't really understand it. There's a lot of, you know, red tape and a lot of BS on the back end. It's just not what you expect it to be. And so I went to my wife and I said, listen, I don't think I should be a cop in LA. I'm very aggressive. I'm very proactive. People in LA are crazy. There's, a, I'm probably going to shoot somebody. Like, I just don't think this is a good idea. And she's like, well, if you're not a cop, what are you going to do? And I said, you know what? I like, um, I like computers. So like, maybe I'll go to school and I'll get a degree and do computers. And so I told the academy I wasn't coming. And I researched all the schools in Southern California. My wife thought I was a weirdo. Um, and I found Santa Clarita College of the Canyons had a really good computer program. So I hacked the system because no, I, I was 30 years old and nobody told me how to do college. Like I had no clue. Hmm. And I went to my counselor and I said, okay, I want to do this class, this class, this class, this, this, and this, and slid it forward. And he looked at me and he goes, what do you need me for? I went, great. I went and signed up. But nobody ever said, Frank, 15 units is a lot of units. Um, I took 34 units in my first semester and I took 32 units in my second semester. Oh, now, geez. fairness, I will never do college again. Um, I, I kind of hacked the system because I started in the spring and I had summer classes and I overlapped them. And I was en I ended up going to school from like 6 a.m. to like nine o'clock at night, like five, six days a week. And I ended up graduating in one year as an honor graduate with an associate of science degree in computer networking. Now, I did not have any idea what I did at the time. And people asked me afterward, like, how could you have possibly have done that? The only reason I was able to do that is because I didn't have a limiting belief on what was possible. Nobody told me 15 units was a lot. I had a goal and I had someplace I needed to start. I knew I was 30. I was starting late in life and I had to, I had to 
get stuff done. Yeah. And so I, I made it happen. Um, I graduated as an honor graduate. I ended up getting a, um, a job right out of college, fixing all of the computers for car dealerships. And like when you go buy a car and that whole finance system they have, when that broke down, they would call me. Um, if I showed up and I, if I needed help, which I did a lot, um, they would have an old guy show up to help me. And this, every time the old guy showed up, he was like, nah, 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 nah. I was like, will I be this guy if I stay in a job like this? And that is right around the time I started like reading books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad and Think and Grow Rich. And I started watching flipping houses like the Montalongos were really big back in the day. And I was like watching them. And I thought it'd be really cool to be an investor. And so I went to a website that was actually around when you started called foreclosures.com. And they had a training class up in Sacramento to where if I paid them $3,000, they teach me how to do all that stuff. So I paid them, went up there, learned how to do foreclosures and investing in all that kind of fun stuff. And then I realized very quickly when I tried to implement that, that having a real estate license would be beneficial. So I just did the college thing. I figured I'd take a crash course, get my license. And I looked around, found a crash course on the weekend and tried to study the books and read the practice tests page by page. And I failed my first exam, hmm. um, which was very humbling. Um, and I realized that like I had ADHD before it was cool. Um, before there was medicine or anything like that. And so like, I just, I couldn't do the book thing to study the tests. And so I went online with, I think, allied real estate school and re realized practice tests were the key. And I ended up getting my license. Um, so back when you got your license, like they didn't give you the envelope like they do today. And like, here, congratulations. Like we had to wait three months to get it in the mail. Yeah. And so it took me six months to get my license. And once I did that, um, I had my job and I had my real estate license and I tried to do both at the same time. And I realized you could very poorly. Um, um, I ended up going to my wife who was pregnant with our first kid and she was not working and I had no buyers or no sellers. And I told her, I said, listen, I think I'm going to be really good at this real estate thing. I want to quit my job. Mm -hmm. And she said, go for it. Ooh. Yeah. It's the only supportive thing she did in that marriage. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that is not true. That's not true. That is not, I'm sure we could figure out something else she did. But anyway, um, so like an insane person, and this is why I tell everybody, don't quit your job. Do not quit your job. That's really bad advice. I was insane to do it. I quit my job and I joined the, um, I was one of the first agents to ever be recruited by Keller Williams in the San Fernando Valley in 2003 hmm. in Northridge. And I remember walking in and I had all these other guys that were around me that were making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'm thinking to myself, man, if I could just act like them and sound like them, like something's bound to happen. And so I was brand new to Los Angeles. I had a family who would not use me. I had a father-in-law that like bought five properties without me, wouldn't use me. And like, I had every excuse in the world to not be successful. And so I thought the the solution was to, I need to cold call as much as I possibly can, because I had somebody in my office, I could listen to him cold call. I took all their information and I put together probably the worst script ever. And I just start making phone calls. I got a bunch of phone numbers from title, which you could do at the time. And I started calling people and I would call people and I would say, hi, my name is Frank. I'm a real estate agent. I have a buyer looking in your neighborhood. If I can get you the price for a home, would you sell it? No. Okay. Click. Hi, my name is Frank. I did that all day. I had the best motivator in the world, which was fear. Um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I was thought I was an idiot for quitting my job. And so I'm calling and I'm burning through these numbers day by day. And I'm like, if I can get you the price for house, we just sell. Yes. Uh, can I see your house now? <laughs> I don't know what to say I, next. <laughs> <laughs> click. I hang up the phone. I'm like, holy crap. Like, what do I do now? Like I had no clue that was going to happen. I look in the offices. I had a friend named Bill in the office. I go to Bill. I go, Bill, I call this guy, this house. He's like, calm down, man. Like, what's the address? I give him the address and he puts all this stuff together. I had no clue what he was putting together. His presentation, comps, all that kind of fun stuff. I had no clue. We jump in the car and we drive to this house and we're driving there and, and he looks over at me and he goes, so Frank, like, what do you want to do in real estate? I'm like, listen, man. I just quit my job and my wife is pregnant. If I can make $60,000 a year in real estate, I'd be really, really happy. He looks at me and he goes, if I made $60,000 a year in real estate, I would slip my wrist. Oh. <laughs> I was like, that's uh, that's scary and motivational at the same time. Um, it was a little $535,000 house in Chatsworth, which is probably like 1.2 today. Um, we got it. 
And the only thing I could say right after that that I did is that I, I hustled my ass off. Um, my first six months in real estate, I did $165,000 and I was rookie of the year for the entire LA area for KW. That was your, that was your net commission? That was my net commission. Yes. I think overall, I didn't track it at the time because I didn't realize how important numbers were my first year, but I think my first 12 months, I did like a little over $300,000. Um, and then, um, wow, 60,000 goal to 300 K. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and that comes to where like my system and everything that I, that I, that I figured out came in. But the funny part is, is that the owner of the office gave me an award and said, that's amazing that you did that. I have 10 new people here. Whatever you did, make them do that. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm getting how much of their commission? Like, I was like, okay. And so yeah. I started trying to, like, the training wasn't like it is today then. And so, like, I got all these books and I tried to duplicate what I did with these people. The next rookie of the year, um, this person did 125000 in their first 12 months and they came out of my class. And that's when I was like, man, if I want to, like, if I want to be successful, I have to help other people. And so like I started coaching and training from the very, very beginning. But the thing is, is that I never wanted to be like one of these big name coaches that you see out there. I just wanted, I just wanted to help people. Yeah. So I've had private coaching people for like my entire life. Um, I think one of the coolest stories that I have though, is back in 2020, I um, was running an office and I recruited somebody who came from, I think he was a software engineer and he transferred into real estate and he's like, listen, man, I don't want to pay a coach. I don't want to pay a mentor. I just want to, you know, I just need a plan. Do you have a plan? I said, I do. I sat him down and I told him exactly what to do. And then his first 12 months in real estate, he did a little over $136,000 and he was rookie of the year for KW. The funny part though, is that I gave him an award and then I had another guy walk up that I recruited at the exact same time. And he was like, how much did that guy do? I go, he did $136,000. He goes, oh. I did 134. Ah, oh. I had the rookie of the year and the runner up during COVID. That's which awesome. In my mind is probably one of the best things that could have happened for real estate. If you knew how to work your database. And so I've been running offices since 2016. I have my own real estate team with my wife, Tracy. Um, and we've done like last year, uh, 2022, we did 25 million in 2023. We did 25 million and most agents business dropped by 30% in that time frame, And ours stayed the same because of the system we use. My coach says that you should be turning over 10% of your database. We we've turned over about 13%. And I tell agents that you should turn over minimum 6% of your database. Explain what you mean by that when you say turnover. So what I've learned in time is that the average person knows about 300 people. And I literally had somebody in my office about 10 minutes ago that told me they only knew 50 people. They were in their thirties. And I'm like, so you only met two people a year for your entire life that you've known, been alive. And she's like, no. And I said, this is how it works. The average person knows about 300 people. If you don't know 300 people, I can sit down with you for an hour and we can figure that out. Have you ever heard of Facebook? You know, <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> well, so this is what I do is I never tell my agents to do something that I've never done. And so people come to me all the time. Like, I don't have a sphere. I don't have this. I don't have that. And those are just excuses. That's all those are. And so what I did is I said, you know what? I want to see how far I can go back to find somebody. So I, I'm 53. I went back to elementary school. I went to classmates.com and I started searching through all mm. the classes that I took and going and finding those people on Facebook. And so I find this girl and I'm messaging, I find her on Facebook. I message her. I say, hey, Sharon, do you remember this is Frank Bernardo from Ms. Gutnick's class? And Took her two days to reply. She replied and she goes, oh my God, Frank, I remember you. Your mom's brownies were amazing. Oh, wow. It's like my mom passed away and like it brought back that memory for me. And so like we connected and I said, hey, I'm putting together my database and I'm going back to see if I can get people that I haven't touched base with in a long time. You know, I want to make sure I can send you a birthday card and holiday card. Can I get your address? Bam. Give me your address. Give me your email. Give me your phone number. Now she's in my database. Yeah. And she lives in Vegas. I was going to say, so that was Vegas, but you, now yeah. you're in LA. Yeah. But I mean, so that's just referral. So there is so much business for referral out of state that I'd say almost every agent drops the ball on referrals because yeah. people will leave the state and people will take them out of their database. And that's probably the biggest mistake you can do. 
our team, so my wife um, is going to be a family reunion for Keller Williams on stage talking about how to do international luxury real estate sales. Because we had somebody in our database and we followed up with them, sold them a bunch of houses, followed up with them, followed up with them. And they're like, hey, I'm thinking about buying a house in Spain. So we reach out to somebody in Spain and we ended up connecting with an agent in Spain. She ends up buying two houses in Spain. We get referral checks from Spain. We ended up, we follow up with our database. We got somebody from Mongolia. We sent referrals to Costa Rica. And I today I just had the guy from Spain fly from Spain to my office to do a presentation to teach agents how to get international luxury referral business. And it's all from database. Mm -hmm. So when I say the average person knows about 300 people, 6%, statistically it's proven 6%, of everybody is going to have somebody buy, sell, or refer business out when it comes to real estate in the next 12 months. The buy and sell part is like, you know, if you weren't a real estate agent, if if you're a real estate agent and your best friend wants to buy or sell a house, they're going to call you, right? Because it's your best friend. You and, and if he doesn't, he's not your best friend anymore. Um, but that's the one-to-one -one transaction. There's a quadratic version to that, and that's the refer part. And Every agent that I know drops the ball on this, like every agent. And the refer part is where you take your sphere of influence and you create advocates for the people that they know that you don't know to refer back to you. Um, one of my coolest stories is that um, there was an 80s um, rock star that I don't know if I can say his name, um, that everybody on this podcast that's probably over 40 would know. Say it. Uh, <laughs> why, why can't you say it? Um, Kenny Loggins. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so. So I don't know Kenny Loggins, but our real estate team sold Kenny Loggins' manager's house. And the way that happened is because we didn't know that guy. The way that happened is that my wife used to be on TV a long time ago. She was on a TV show called Mr. Belvedere. Um, she's the daughter on that TV show. And so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so she, when you're, when you're a kid on a TV show, they have a person on the set called a stage mom, right? So she's actually kept in contact with the stage mom forever. And so the stage mom is in our database. We market to her as if she is the best client on the planet. And she happens to know this guy named Chris, who's Kenny Loggins' manager. And one day, you know, he says, I'm getting a bunch of artists that are in Nashville and the company's having me move to Nashville. So I'm gonna have to sell my house. Well, the stage mom says, well, if you sell your house, we have to call Tracy because she is amazing. And the next thing you know, I'm standing in front of Chris asking him to turn up the music for the open house. What he, what he says to me is he goes, do you want me to have Kenny just sing in the corner? <laughs> like, yes, that would be amazing. <laughs> but my wife is like, he was joking. I go, I know he was joking. I know it's fine. Um, but I mean, we, we've done that through everybody because the thing is, is that you can't expect to get business from everybody in your database, but you can get them to refer you to other people. And if you have the right follow-up program, so like my follow-up program is a 40 touch follow-up program. And it's not random. It's very, very specific. So like, if you joined my office, Jeff, I would say, listen, this is what you need to do. You need to call everybody, you know, period. Don't do anything else. You call them and have a conversation with them. The last thing you ever talk about is real estate because nobody wants to be sold to. Mm -hmm. So you have a conversation with them. I have agents that jump in and they email everybody. I go, did you call them? They're like, no. I said, no, that's called spam. You don't want to just email people. That's spam. When you text them now, because of technology, texting can be spam. Yeah. They know you're an agent and you're in the database. They're not going to look at your stuff, just like if you mailed them a postcard. But if you call them and you have a real life conversation with them and you get to know how are they doing? How's the wife? How's the kids? How's the family? How's the dog? How's the job? How is all that stuff? And then you send them an email. Now the email has value. But this is probably the biggest thing that I think is important is that when you call somebody, you're going to find out that they're okay. Their job's okay. Their wife's okay. Their kids are okay. Jobs, everything's perfectly fine. In two weeks, it might not be. And if you don't follow up with them for three months after you talk to them, why would they ever call you? Yeah. And I think with today's technology, a lot of people are confused on how real estate works. Like people buy and sell because of life events. Nobody wakes up and goes, I'm just going to sell the house today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or Jeff, let's go to lunch and go buy six homes. Like yeah. that's just not realistic. Right. People buy and sell because, you know, they get a job, they lose a job, they have a baby, they get divorced, they get married, like macro version, they get rich, they get poor. 
And if you can follow up with somebody enough, because your com competition is not following up with their people enough, yeah. and everybody you know is in somebody else's database. So if you can follow up with them enough and be their best friend, they don't have to be yours, but you can be theirs, be their best friend, they're, they're going to call you. Yeah. And the thing is, is that we, I'm doing, like, I'm not one of the coaches that like, if you join my coaching program, like you're going to get one of my coaches and my staff, or like, you have to sell a hundred million dollars to get me as a coach. Like this is, it, it's one of those things that like people are going to get business with the consistency of their behavior. And it just takes, they have to be patient and it's a volume versus skill versus time equation that if they do enough volume, their skill will develop. And then in a shorter amount of time, depending on the volume, their business is going to happen very quickly. But most people have a deal right now hanging out, waiting for them. Yeah. They just don't even know it. Yeah. Let's get into that a little bit. And yeah. and first, I want to digress for a second because you mentioned Kenny Loggins. I just got done watching uh, the, uh, the the We Are the World uh, <laughs> thing on Netflix. And that, it just sparked it. I'm like, oh, yeah, it was, I, which I hadn't even realized he was a part of that until I watched that documentary or whatever the hell it was. But um I guess that ages me because I, I was watching it with my 20 year old daughter and she's like, I've never even heard this song. I'm like, how have you not heard this song? What the hell's wrong with you? Where did I fail you? Um, totally off base. But now I want to get back to the phone call. So I want to ask you a question because and I want to get I want to get deeper here because obviously what you just described, um, I think there's some follow up and kind of, you know, uh, it's more sp specific strategies that need to be applied here. But I, I do want to ask you because you mentioned, you know, make the phone call, which is the old school mindset. Like we all, you know, it's, it's like the millennial Gen Z generation, maybe some Gen X, like, I just want to send an email. I just want to send a text. I'm guilty of that. Um, now I've kind of switched as you can probably tell, like social is a big part of a part of my business. And I now teach agents that before the phone call, Actually, go stalk them on social media, show up on their post, hit them with dopamine, because when you make the phone call, they're much more apt to pick up the call because you've been hitting them with this positive you know, hormone that makes them feel good. And you're not selling them squat. You're just, hey, great. That was really awesome. Great picture. Great. Whatever. Right. Now, do you do you incorporate that into your training today as the as the evolved uh, product, so to speak? So. I don't feel like people know how sphere of influence works. They say sphere of influence, they think family and friends. There's layers to your sphere of influence. Like yeah. my first layer is my family. Of course, you know, nobody's going to get past that layer unless I start marrying all my clients, right? My wife would not like that. So like, that's your family. Well, the second one is like your administrators, board of directors, like your ALC, like that is your second level. So like, that's your best friends, your best friend's friend and the people that you would go to for like personal things. That's your second layer. And then you have different layers that go out. You have like your network, your community. And then the social media part is your audience. Like there's a tremendous amount of people in your sphere of influence that are watching you that you've probably never talked to. And your job is to push out content to pull them closer to you. And so when you get to say like your neighborhood and your community and there's people that you know, but you don't necessarily connect with them. Yeah. You got to go to social media. I tell people, I go, go to social media and find something that connects you to. Cause like when I list a house, I walk through the house and I go, give me a quick tour of the house before we do anything, because I'm looking around the house to find something for us to connect with. Yeah. Right. Oh my God, you're into martial arts. I'm into martial arts too. Like, and so you go to their social media, find out who they are. What do they like? What are they doing? And then you use that as leverage to heighten the connection because the reason people are going to use you is because you're in a deep relationship with them. And so you have to get into a deep relationship with people. And you do that through, you know, social media is the greatest thing that's ever been invented. And you can leverage that. That's one of the reasons that like, you know, my wife and I are doing international tr transactions and that we're able to connect with people in other states and get referrals because we find out what do people like. Um, I think, you know, we can go down the road with closing gifts, you know, as well. I think people, real estate agents drop the ball in closing gifts because they don't use social media to find out what's important to a buyer or seller. And they give them a, a, a Cutco knife or a, nothing wrong with Cutco, I love Cutco. Um, they, uh, they give them a bottle of wine or a gift yeah. basket. It's like, you just made a $20,000, you know, deal. 
Like go give them, like you find out that they like the Eagles. You go get them an autographed football of the entire Eagles team because, you know, that's probably discounted right now. Um, and then you uh, <laughs> shots then you, fired. <laughs> exactly. And then you give that football to them. It's going to go on their mantle and somebody's going to go, oh, my God, that's a great Eagles football. Who gave that yeah. to you? Yeah. My yeah. realtor gave that to me. Yeah. They'd be like, what? Yeah. You know, stop, stop taking, stop taking the easy. Well, and I, I want to digress on that because, uh, and first of all, b- before I digress, I just did another podcast episode with a mortgage leader and he had switched companies and he told me that the company that he went to, they found out what his drink of choice was, which is, which is Tito's and, and soda. And they sent him a case of Tito's with relabeled with his face on every bottle. And, and when his wife got home and saw this, she's like, how do you not go work for that company? And I was like, wow. Yeah. Well played. Um, That's over the top, of course. But, but what I, what I want to digress to is, is what I would consider. I consider it one oh one, and sadly, I don't think it is. And that is what you're talking about, which is getting to know when their birthday is, their anniversary, their pets names, their favorite sports teams, their favorite hobbies, like all these things. And I, I hope there's not a lot of people listening to this, that that's not like a light bulb moment for them, because if it is, I'm going to be like, damn, like who's been training you. But I assume like, that's a part of your process. Like you got to get these details from people to then make the follow-up way more authentic and real. Correct. Is that a part of the process? hundred percent. Okay. I mean, authenticity, like people know you, like you, and trust you. That's like super basic 101 of real estate. And people want to just go to, I want the deal. And so like birthdays are super important. Christmas cards, holiday cards, Hanukkah cards. You know, I even tell people like, send them a 4th of July card because nobody else will. Send them a home anniversary card. I don't care if you didn't sell them the house. Like send them something, just keep touching them and conversating with them and communicating with them because everybody, you know, is in somebody else's database Yeah, and you don't know how much they're talking to that person. So you have to talk to them more. So like my program is like 40 plus. And if you really dial it out, it it could be 85 touches a year because I tell people like you have to put together a newsletter, not give them the best apple pie recipe. Like nobody wants that. People go to Zillow for a reason. Give them a reason to go to your website. Yeah. Give them specific information. There's there's like a whole bunch of people out there that have really great newsletters. Send it to them twice a month. That's 24 touches right there. But put value in it on, on what they want, what, what's going on in their neighborhood, like what's, you know, home values for their house. Like there's certain things that you can do. And like a, a newsletter class is a whole different thing, but you can put together a newsletter to where people click on it and then they go to your website instead of them going, oh, that's really cool and going to Zillow. All Zillow did was create a really cool website and push people there. Like Zillow didn't do anything that you can't do. You know what they did? You know what they did? They, 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 they own attention. Yeah, They they got the attention and positioned themselves as the authority, which is what you all should be doing. And they're doing a poor job of it, but Zillow already beat you to it and you're not going to overtake them. Well, that's in, in one of my classes, I teach agents. I say, you know, attention is the new oil. Mm-hmm. Like, the, like if you look back 20 years, the most powerful companies in the world were like Chevron and steel and gas. And there were all these, all these things. If you look at it today, it's Google, it's Facebook, it's Tesla, it's, it's digital data companies yeah. and they're buying your attention. Yeah. Influence influencers are making millions of dollars because they are able to grab people's attention. Yeah, yeah. And all you have to do is touch people consistently 40 plus times over a 12 month period of time. And you're going to make a rip of money. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and the thing is, is this is not hyperbole. Like my team's doing it. I'm teaching agents to do it. And it's just, th- this is how I explain it to agents. If I hired you to be, in my coffee shop and be a barista in my coffee shop. And for you and I to make money, you had to come to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, nine to five and make an amazing cup of coffee. And you showed up Monday and you crushed it. You made the best cup of coffee I've ever had in my entire life, but you didn't show up Tuesday. You didn't show up Wednesday. You tried to work half a day on Thursday and you came to work on Friday. Would you have a job? Yeah. The problem is, is you would not have a job, but most right. real estate agents treat their business like that and they expect yeah. a different result. Yeah, because they got into real estate because they can control their schedule. And then the, the the result of that is not making any money because they're not putting in the effort. Yeah, absolutely. 
I get it. Yeah. So, so let's, let's, um, let's rewind it back to, and, and by the way, you mentioned those companies. I, I like to use Nike and say, you, what you don't realize is, is you're, you're not buying Nikes because of the leather, because of the way they're made, because of any of those things, you're buying it because they own your attention and they've owned your attention for a long time. Um, it's, it's, there's so many good examples, Coke and Pepsi, right? It's, it's Google, not because Google. Navy is the best cola. They did Google, a better Amazon. job of owning your attention. Google Amazon and click on images and see if you see a rainforest. <laughs> good. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a great point. I love it. All right. So, so let's, let's digress and let's say that, uh, I'm a new agent and and I come to Frank and I'm like, man, dude, I've heard a lot about you. I've heard about the guys that have made 100K in, in their first six months. I'm I'm just coming out of a 15 year teaching career and I'm tired of, you know, getting stepped on by kids and not making a dime for it. I need to make six figures. I know I need to have I know, I know you tell me I know 300 people. Okay, yeah, sure. Between, you know, family, friends, social, all the things. Where do I start? What do I do? So the way I put it together, it's a three-step process. You can do any of the steps independent of each other, but if you don't do it the right way, you're just not going to have a strong business. You're just going to have a business. And so the first step is build your foundation. The foundation is your database and is your online presence, period. And so when people come to me, I say, give me your phone, go to contacts, and download everybody into your database. And then I have my VA or I help them or somebody helps them to get everybody into your database. And then I go through their online presence. Where are you at? What are you doing? I'd say 99% of agents are not even coming close to posting enough on social media. Yeah. Like, And when I tell them how much they're supposed to post, they look at me sideways. Like you should be posting 10 times a day, 10 times a day, because you're trying to get people's attention. And when you post on social media, it should be, in my opinion, the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 personal, 20% business. Mm -hmm. Because people aren't going to use you because you're an amazing real estate agent. They're going right. to use you because they connect with you because, oh, oh my God, you have dogs, I have dogs, or you do mm -hmm. this job, I do that, something like that. So you get those two things set up. You get your database set up the right way with all of your people in it, and you get your online presence set up. Because when you're a new agent, you're going to start talking to people. And then somebody, you know, it's like, hey, my brother just got his real estate license. If you're thinking about selling, you should call him. They'd be like, great, I'll call him. But the first thing they do is not call him. The first thing they do is search him. And if they search you and nothing comes up or some random stuff comes up, that doesn't make you look good. It makes you look like you're a new agent. And you haven't done anything, but you can control the first page of Google results if you post enough on social media on enough platforms. I mean, you and I probably both know that. Mm -hmm. I found that out because I got a random referral back when I first started and I showed up at this person's house and I said, Hey, it's Frank Bernard. She goes, Oh, I know exactly where you are. Your kids go to this school and you do this and da da da. da. I was like, Whoa, hmm. how, did, how did you know that? She goes, I searched you. I was like, Oh, wow. That's how powerful that is. Yeah. So getting the online presence set up is way more important than most people think. And then getting your database set up. And then from your database, you have to get a program set up to where you have a follow up process that happens with everybody in your database consistently. So you, I'm going to call people. And then tomorrow my database is going to tell me, you have to email that person. You have to send a note card to that person. You have to post on Facebook with that person. You have to do X, Y, Z. And then there's going to be 40 different times during the entire year that you follow up with that person and talk to that person. And it's like I said before, like they don't have to be your best friend, but you need to be theirs and you need to communicate with them like that. Yeah. So as you're as you're setting this up, is it literally that simple as is the the contacts in your phone? Is does it does it extend beyond that? I so the statistic is th everybody knows about three hundred people. I, I actually think it's more, and you know I could I, I challenge people in my training classes all the time. I said I bet everybody a thousand dollars in this room that I'll walk down the street and I could come back with a, with with a client, and we go through our day-to-day -day lives interacting with people and never, ever, ever putting them into our database. So with my, my coach, I have a coach and my coach says I should be converting 10% of my database. So my wife and I are sitting down, we're like, how do we get more people in our database? And so, cause we pretty much have everybody in our database. I'm like, Hey, have you talked to the dry cleaner? And she's like, Oh, you mean that one dry cleaner over there? I'm like, yeah. So ask her, we go to the dry cleaner, we get her information. 
We go to the dog groomer. We get their information. Okay, so that's not that simple. Um, and and uh, and it's kind of uncomfortable, the thought for some people. So I'm thinking to myself, without looking like a used car salesman, you walk in the dry cleaner. How do you get their information? So I am super aggressive. So I am a little bit different than most people. And it and it you. The mindset is, is that you don't necessarily have to get the business on the first interaction. If you are giving somebody else business and you're using their services, it's not weird to talk to them about your services. And you don't have to say, do you want to buy or sell a house? Me personally, what I do is I say, hey, you know what? You guys have been in this location for a really long time. So you're probably part of the neighborhood. Do you rent or do you own? That's me. I'm super aggressive. That's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. But you can just say, hey, you know what? I'm a local real estate agent in this area. You know, you know, first of all, introduce yourself, make sure that you know their name and they know their name, and then use it as a progression. It starts off as a um a touch program. You can put the business address with the person's name in your program to use their business address as not their home address. And you can start it like that. This is probably, in my opinion, the most valuable thing I can tell you is that you have to stop treating people like leads and start treating people like people. And okay. everybody is going to be different. Everybody is going to be different. Yeah. Everybody has a different experience. Everybody thinks differently, acts differently. And all we want is real estate agents or leads. Yeah. Nobody's a lead. We're yeah. all people. Commission breath. So yeah. let's go back to the, I'm the dry cleaner now. Yep. And your question to me is, do I buy or rent? I don't think that's too invasive um, because you introduce yourself as a real estate agent. I kind of expect that question. Okay. So I rent um, because I work at a dry cleaner and can't afford to buy. Um, and <laughs> so what's the next, what's the follow-up question? So you rent. Okay. So, so, okay. You know, renting's great right now and there's a lot of advantages to that, but if I could show you how to own your property and you're going to pay less in your mortgage than you are in rent right now. Would that interest you? Well, again, I work at a dry cleaner. So yes, I need to save as much money as possible. All right. What's your best email address? Let me let me give you some information. And then, you know, we can kind of see what's out there for you. And then okay. we can take it. All right. Uh, what would be a more passive way to approach? Because, so let's just say I come into your program and I'm like, whoa, whoa, Frank, remember, I was a teacher. I'm not a salesman. It's not my style. What do you suggest? How, you know, how, how should I approach? So I don't feel like I'm, I'm you, Frank, I'm not you. So there, there's a, there's a thing that I call the vendor list. So you create a vendor list. We all have a vendor list and you go to, so I go to my dry cleaner and I'm like, um, Hey, I'm putting together a vendor list of all the people that I use for my services. I use you as dry cleaning. And I want to know if I can put you on my vendor list so I can send it out to all of my clients. Cause I'm in real estate. I've been doing real estate for 20 years and I want to send your information to all of my people in case they need dry cleaning services. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. And okay. nobody's going to say no to that. And the thing is, is that I'm going to tell people, Hey, if you use so-and-so dry cleaners, like let them know I sent you. And then I'm going to say, hey, I use it. Somebody's going to say, hey, I use the dry cleaners. They were really good. They got that stain out. I'm going to call the dry cleaner and I'm going to say, hey, Joan, my friend John said that he used you. I wanted to make sure that everything was good with John. Was he OK with that? And then that's a touch. And then now I'm referring business and they're making money from everything that I'm doing. Why would they not refer business back to me? No, I get it. But if I'm just an employee of the dry cleaner, maybe it's less. I'm challenging you right now. I'm just yeah, firing. Absolutely. I'm just firing darts at you. Yeah. Well, they don't um, have to be the owner because I want them as a client. So if I'm getting them business and they're making money and you know, I'm they're in my database and I'm following up with them, it's just another person in the database that you're gaining a relationship with. And the thing is, is that that person is a conduit to the owner. Yeah. You know, I'm going to ask him who's the owner, and then I'm going to have the same conversation with the owner. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I've done that with dog groomers. I've done that with my hair people. Like, you know, how often, how often do you get shot down when you, when you, uh, attack them? Very rarely, very rarely. And, and, and this is the other thing is that I had an agent in my office that I said, you know, you have to message people on Facebook. You have to talk to people. You have to do these things. She's like, I don't want to do that. I'm like, why? She's like, because I'm afraid they're going to block me. And I'm like, well, they've already blocked you because of your mindset. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. So if, 
I just did a thing in my team meeting today, talked about Kobe Bryant. He was talking about doubt on how that you doubt yourself, that you're going to wake up in the morning, you're going to win or lose, but you're going to have to start the same day. Same thing every day consistently, regardless. And doubt is probably the most useless thing. Yeah. So if you challenge somebody and you have a conversation with somebody and they don't want to give you their information, they just kind of blow you off or whatever, they're not going to use you anyway. Move on. There's 8 billion people on this planet. Yeah. Like, don't let one dude like mess you up. It's it's literally it's literally mindset. Like the entire real estate business, it's a hundred percent mindset. And we as agents can't seem to get out of our own way for the most part. Right. Yeah. No. There's there's no doubt about it. So all right. So now we're we're past this point and we've got the database and I want to grow my database. What's next? So the the database and then the online presence and then step two is lead generation. Okay. So you have all those people that? now. Oh, and so I, I hate using this now, and I don't know why, but it's the Ford conversation. You know, I'm sure you've heard of it. It's family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Mm -hmm. Like It's only that way because it spells Ford. But I just tell people, like, talk to them. Talk to them as if you know them. Talk to them with what you know. If you don't know them, like, figure out, go on social media, figure out who they are, follow up with them, ask them questions. Ask them questions and find out who they are. Being interested is interesting. Don't call and try to sell anybody anything. Yeah. Like if you want to buy or sell, like if you called your best friend and led the conversation every time with like, do you want to buy or sell a house? Like yeah. you would a voicemail. Yeah. So you call them up and everybody on the planet is going to buy, sell, or rent. So your job is to call them and figure out where are they at in that process? Where are they at? Yeah. yeah. How are they doing? Because with, like without I, without asking the question though, ultimately it's it's the, 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 it's the authentic conversation that will lead to the, business question, correct? Yeah. Because I'm going to have a conversation with them. Everything in their life is going to be perfect. I'm going to hang up the phone. I'm going to drop a just a note in the mail saying, hey, it was really great talking to you. I hope everything goes well with your daughter at USC. Drop that in the mail. And then my information will be on there, you know, on the letterhead or whatever. Drop that in the mail. I will send them a text message. Hey, I just saw the Lions, you know, play in the playoff game. And I was thinking about you. What did you think of the game? Like you're going to drop all these little things that have nothing to do with real estate, but then mm -hmm. like the emails come, your real estate is going to be on there. Your voicemail is going to have real estate on there. Your um, letterhead is going to have real estate on there. Like you're going to have all these passive things that are in the constant communication that you're giving people. And it's only going to be a matter of time before they end up using you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a powerful statement too, where, where you said, you know, if you call your friend every day and, and ask them if they want to buy or sell real estate, what's going to happen, they're going to block you right? Then why do we go to social media every single day and talk about buying and selling real estate and 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 then not understanding why it's not working for us? Um, that's good. I like One that. of the most powerful things that I tell people is just like, find out if your clients own a dog. Like yeah. dog, do you own a dog? Yeah. Yeah. I own two dogs. I own two Boston yeah. Terriers. Dog yeah. people are crazy. Yeah. Like if you find out when the dog's birthday is and you send the dog a birthday gift, like, come on. Yeah. Come yeah. on. You do that to my wife and sold. Yeah. To me, I don't really care, but yes. Uh, yeah. You're right. Um, but from a marketing 100%. perspective, you'd be like, damn, that's pretty badass that he did that. It, Yeah. It, it's, that's, it's, it shows attention to detail. Right. And that that's memorable. Right. It's, and, and even more so it's, as I tell people, like when, when you're, when in your, in your Instagram profile, don't put dog lover, put the breed of the dog because you got to narrow it down, niche it down. That's what's going to make you connect with somebody. And, and then as the agent, remember the breed of said dog, go on Google, learn something about said breed and bring something up about said breed and watch how they just light up and start talking about their dog. It'd be, ask yeah. them about the dog. Like, yeah. how's Jimmy doing? Like, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, it's super powerful and it's, it's super under the radar to where most people don't do it because we're all looking for the deal. Yeah. 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 You're right. All right. So, you know, we're running up against the clock here. Um, what's, what's the best way to summarize or, or what, what maybe have I not asked you or that we haven't talked about that you want to make sure you drop on this episode? I think that we as agents just really make it way more complicated than it needs to be. We're in a relationship based business. Nobody, none of us are buying, actually buying and selling homes. Like we're trying to help relationships and our job is a relationship shape based business. If you create a foundation through social media and you create a foundation through your database, 
like when people buy and sell businesses, they're not buying the furniture and selling the furniture and, and artifacts in your office. They're selling the contacts in there that dentists do it, doctors do it, other companies do it. You're doing the same thing. Your value is in your database and that's where it needs to start. And then you have to call people and talk to people that you know. Like if you want to start at the outer ring of sphere of influence, which is strangers, you're going to be the statistic of last year that 49% of all agents did zero to one deal. I, I see it every day. Yeah. And you have to call the people you know, and you have to develop a relationship, a deep relationship with them. And then the third part of my system is that you have to follow up with them frequently and aggressively. And you can't be afraid of doing that. If you're afraid they're going to block you or not use you, then they weren't going to use you anyway and just yeah. move on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's um, that's good. And I, and I think what, what we're talking about today too is it's, it's not like this is an earth shattering. Yeah. But right now it feels like so many agents have gotten away from – it's like the back to basics conversation, you know, and it's – it's it's and you mentioned I I think I think one of the most profound things you said today is probably one of the biggest problems that real estate agents have, which is the phone's ten thousand pounds and they refuse to pick it up. Yeah, and, their lead generation strategy is prayer. They're praying yeah, for the phone to ring. Yeah. It's like you can't do that. It's a relationship based business, and you have to get out there and start creating and and, and you know having relationships at a deeper level. Yeah. What about what about uh, you know? going back to the dry cleaning conversation of, of, you know, creating something value-based like, Hey, I started this Facebook group around this community and I highlight local businesses and we do various giveaways and, and, um, or, or I, I have this email newsletter where I'm highlighting things that are going on every month. And, and that would be more of a passive way to, to reach people to say, Hey, I'm, you know, do you live in this community? Great. I have this newsletter, give me your email address and I'll put you on it. And I don't know, does, do you have anybody that does that? You know, I think that's Facebook groups is probably, and you guys are, you know, advocates of this is probably the most underutilized tool that's out there. Yeah. It's just like you, so like our farming area that we have, we created a farming area and we basically run the farming area and we have everybody in the community in this group. And then we use the group to basically, you know, do you, are you selling this? This is what's happening in the neighborhood. It's basically a community group to where people talk about things. But then when we have a sale, we put up the sale, we yeah. put up the listing, we put up all this mm -hmm. stuff. But Facebook groups, if you know how to run one, it is one of it is the most powerful thing on social media, in my opinion, because it creates community, yeah. which is one of your spheres of influence. And if you can create a community around who you are, what you do, or where you live, or something like that, like you're going to end up just creating a funnel for your business. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I preach into the choir on that one, hundred percent. I love it, Frank. If somebody wants to get in touch with you. It's the best way to do so. Uh, contact me directly through my cell phone. That's the way I, you know, communicate best, which is a eight one eight two six three seven two six five. Um, or my my email is pretty easy. It's frank at frankbernardo dot com. Eight one eight two six three seven two six five. You said. And my uh my real estate sales page is you know real estate mastery one hundred one dot com. Um, but I mean if you Google me, like it's hard it's hard to miss my my hair. <laughs> I mean, I've I've got hair envy, but I wasn't going to say it now that you said it. Okay, I'll I'll live there. Frank, it's been a pleasure, man. This has been great conversation. Uh, such so needed, uh, and I and I know that there's a lot that's that people can take away from today because I I guarantee you that this isn't the first time every agent heard this. But what I will also guarantee is that a lot of people have gotten away from it, and and you got to get back to doing this kind of stuff and. Uh, if, if let's just say an agent said, you know, I'd really love to see that cadence of the 40 touches. Is that something that you would share with them? Absolutely. Awesome. 100%. Just, just I mean, reach I'll out. I'll give it to anybody. Most people, most people won't do it, but I have no problem giving it to anybody. I have, I have some, and like, if somebody reaches out to me, I'll send them the link of the video to where I explain it in detail. Love it. That's perfect. I appreciate you, man. I'm glad we were brought together by uh, one Scott Groves and uh, we'll hope to stay in touch. And again, you heard what Frank said. He didn't just send you to a website. He gave you his cell phone number. He gave you his personal email address. Uh, take advantage of that. Reach out, get what, you, uh, get what you definitely need because obviously he is on to something and he knows what he's doing. And, 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 and hey, we're in survival mode, man. It's, it's survival of the fittest at this point in, the, uh, in this juncture of our industry.
Thank so you thank so much. I really appreciate you and everything that you guys do. I love your group. I'm in it every day and I'm trying to help people in there on a daily basis. So I love it. It's awesome. Glad stuff. to hear that, man. Thank you, brother. Well, thank you. Black Coat Agents Podcast. Oh, <laughs>